Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're looking at taxation. I'm um, going to do a bit of uh, content first of all, and then we'll go through some questions. Um, basically, we're looking at the Australian taxation system. I'm going to identify some of the key terms we need to know, and then of course we'll go through some of those uh, those harder questions that we'll get with the tax tables. Um, so first of all, what is taxation? Hopefully you already have an idea about taxation. Taxation is uh, charged, whether it be on income tax or whether it be goods and services tax, and that helps to pay for um, public services services that we might have like hospitals, parks, uh, garbage trucks, all those other things that uh, police and, and ambulances that, that, that need to get money, need to be paid for their services, um, but that we don't pay them directly, we pay them through GST or income tax. Um, so two types of taxation, as I mentioned, income tax, which is uh, taxation based on our actual income, and we pay that through uh, your employer. And then we have our goods and services tax, our GST, which is 10%, which is added on to goods and services that we might purchase um, that are non-essential services. So things like you might, you might buy, buy a PlayStation or a computer, you might buy a can of Coke, um, those things will most likely have GST added on. Things like bread and water, however, that are essential items to survive, those things often don't have GST attached to them. So you might want to have a look at the list of things that aren't, uh, aren't included with GST, but that's another lesson. So today we're looking at income tax mostly with taxation. Um, so a couple of little key terms you can see on the page here. First of all, gross income is the total of all income. So someone might say, oh, I get paid $120,000. Um, often that's their gross income. It's before other things have been taken out. It's what your employer says that I pay you. We go to net income, however, and that's usually the money that we take home. So the money that you actually get put into your account. So it says there are things like your gross income with deductions such as tax, union fees, superannuation, might be healthcare uh, as well that might get taken out into the private health insurance, all that kind of stuff. Um, so again, gross income is all the money you get paid from your employer, but net income is actually what you get paid into your account with those other things deducted from you. A taxable income. Now, a taxable income is interesting. Now, that is your income uh, on which you believe you should be taxed. Now, let's say, for example, that I earn $120,000 a year, but in order to earn that money, let's say I'm an Uber driver. Um, I'm just going out here, this might be correct, not correct, but I might be an Uber driver saying, well, hold on, you know, I spend $20,000 a year on petrol, but I need that petrol in order to earn that $120,000. So what I think is I shouldn't have to pay tax upon that $20,000 that I've paid in order to earn my money. So what they'll work out and they'll say, okay, you know what, that's a tax deduction. You need to use that money in order to earn your money. Um, therefore, we just won't charge you tax upon that. So that, for example, if I earn $120,000 a year, I'm claiming $20,000 of tax deductions. That means I should only be taxed upon $100,000. Now, I still have to buy the petrol, have to spend that $20,000. I'm just not going to be charged tax upon that. Um, so our taxable income is the income on which we believe that we should be taxed upon. Income tax, they look very similar, don't they? Taxable income and income tax. Income tax is the actual tax that you will pay upon your income or your taxable income. So let's say, for example, that Uber driver, um, you know, he earns $120,000. He doesn't believe he should be paid $20,000 in tax. So we say, you know what, your taxable income can be $100,000. We then work out in the $100,000 that you now owe $30,000 of income tax, and that's the amount that you're going to have to pay to the government. So income tax is paid to the government once a person's taxable income passes a set amount in the year, as we spoke about that $100,000. Uh, now, its general amount would be like 30% of what you earn, but of course, if you earn a very low amount of money, you'll pay lower amount of tax. If you earn a lot of, lot of money, like $200,000 plus, you'll pay almost half of your income in tax. And so there's a bit of a scale there, and that's what today's lesson is about. Today's lesson is about working out how much we have to pay. Um, income tax is calculated by the current tax table. Uh, now, this is an older table. You can see I probably should have put on the current 2021 table, um, but so this is the 20, 2012 and 2013. In an examination, um, you'll always be given a particular tax table, whether it be the, the current one or it might be an older one. So please, although you might want to use most up to date, try using a few different ones so that it does change and you can modify it depending on what's in front of you. But we're using the 2012 and 2013. You'll see some other tax tables in a little while. So you can see this tax table here. Uh, you can see there are five brackets or five levels, this tax table here. Uh, we start off, off the first uh, column is our taxable income. So that's the, the amount of money that we believe we should be taxed upon. Um, 
So zero to $18,200, we're paying no tax at all. So, you know, if you want to earn no tax or have to pay no tax, as long as you earn under $18,200 for this particular year, I don't think now it's almost $20,000, um, you know, then you won't have to pay tax upon it. Problem is, is that enough to survive? Probably not. Um, so we're then going to the next tax bracket. So if you earn between $18,201 to $37,000, you'll pay a little bit of tax. You'll pay 19 cents for every dollar over 18,200. Now, that means if I put them both in dollars, $0.19 for every single dollar that I'm over 18,200. So let's say, for example, um, I'm on 20, let's say let's say $30,000, for example, right? I earn $30,000 in a year. That's how much I'm paying tax upon. I'm gonna see how much over 18,200 that is. Now, of course, all I have to now do is subtract those two amounts, okay? Uh, that's gonna be approximately, what's that, 800, 1,000, so what's that gonna be, like $11,800 thereabouts, okay? And then I'm gonna be being charged upon that for 19 cents for that entire amount. So for each of those dollars over the 18,200, I'm paying the 19 cents. Um, and then we work that out. And of course, as you go through that tax table, the more money you earn, you can see the greater amount you're gonna be paying. Um, and, and certainly if you're over that 180,000 bracket, you know, you're paying a whole lot of cash there. Um, a lot of people think, you know, how do they come up with these original amounts for the last three brackets? And they basically work out the maximum tax from the previous bracket so for example, they will do 37,000, subtract the 18,200, they'll then times that by the 19 cents, the $0.19, and that will end up being the 3572. And then we readjust it. So for example, if I, let's say we ballpark $100,000, right? 100,000, that's a nice easy number. I'd say, you know what, my 100 grand is gonna be sitting in this fourth bracket, okay? Uh, this fourth bracket, you know, I only ever use that amount of the taxable income to figure out which bracket I'm in. Now I simply look at what's in yellow there. So this now tells me that I'm gonna be paying or charging or being charged $17,547 plus 0 0.37, that's 37 cents, for every single dollar over 80,000. Now of course I've used a nice amount, so we know it's times 20,000. You might put though, 100,000, subtract the 80,000, but certainly I think most of you would probably just say times 20,000. Um, make sure you know that that is an addition and that is a multiplication because I often see people get those run the wrong way and the numbers go way out. Remember, look at the, the, the value that you're paying in tax. Remember, that's the amount of money that you have to pay the government. If you're paying more tax than what you earn, doesn't sound right, you probably made a mistake. So let's go back, recalculate it, make sure we've got the pluses and the times in the right spot, use the formula that's in front of you in that tax table, and you should get it right. Remember I said, it's around about 30%, it will change give or take what you earn, um, but certainly you're not gonna be paying more than what you earn because then how can you pay it? Okay, so what we're gonna now do, we're gonna look at a couple of questions. You might want to uh, have a bit of a pause this, um, that's up to you. What we're going to do, I'm going to go straight into number 15. I think that's probably a nice one to look at to start off with because it's given me a different tax table to have a look at. So for that tax table, we can see the 2017, 2018 tax table for Australian years. You can see that may have, uh, it's almost the same as the 12 and 13 one, to be honest. Um, you can still got my five tax brackets. It's still 18,200 for that first level. Um, it's still 180,000 for that last level. So we can kind of see where we're at. Now, we got Hugo, he earned $72,670 per annum. All right. In the financial year, he had total tax deductions of 3790. Now, remember I said about the Uber driver, he uh, you know, had to pay money for his petrol in order to earn his money, so he didn't think he should be taxed upon it. For a teacher, for example, um, I might say I'll buy whiteboard markers or a laptop or internet, some of my internet, um, and they're things that I need for my job, therefore I shouldn't be paying tax on them. So. I will deduct those out of my uh, my gross income. Now in this case, he's deducting 3790. Now usually um, $300 or more, you have to show evidence, okay? That means receipts. Uh, you can't just make up numbers because then you'd probably make up your whole pay and say I deduct a whole lot. Um, but certainly you have to show evidence for over $300 in Australia. 
Um, but in this case, we don't know what he's actually claiming for. We just know he's claiming. So it says to find his taxable income. So how much money should he be taxed upon? We want to simply subtract the deductions from his gross income. So 72670, we're going to subtract the 3790.35, and we get a total of $68,879.65. So again, that amount, $68,879.65. So although we earn $72,670, we only want to pay tax on the 68. Now, of course, in this instance, um, over $300, you have to show evidence of that in receipts, etc. So that's why your parents, etc., might have, have a folder full of receipts because any amount over $300, you have to show evidence. Otherwise, you just make it up, right? And you claim your whole income. That's not going to work. Um, and you actually got to do that for seven years. You got to hold those receipts for seven years because you can get audited, which means the tax guys can come and say, show us evidence of the things that you've claimed. So you'd actually have to say what they're for. But in this case, we don't know what they are, but I'm going to be paying money on 68.879.65. Now, the last part, of course, is to find out how much tax is payable or otherwise known as to calculate the income tax. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to that tax table. I'm going to then figure out which of those rows that I'm sitting in, which of those classes or groups I'm sitting in, Okay, and I'll work out the tax. So 68,000. So 68,000 sits really comfortably in that third level there. I only ever use that first column just to identify which column I'm in or which row I'm in. So once I've done that, I know I'm inside there. The bit I need to look at is this 3572. So we are being charged $3,572 plus. 32 and a half cents, so 0 0.325. Make sure you put it in dollars. Don't put it in cents because you're in trouble if you do that. Uh, and then we're timing that by every dollar over 37,000. Now, this is not a nice amount, so I'm actually going to put in the 68879.65. I'm going to then subtract that with the 37,000. And now it's going to be a matter of some putting it into my calculator. So I'm going to do that very quickly. So I'm going to I'm going to put in a little bit back to front because I'm using my computer. I forgot my calculator today, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to take my 37,000 away. But you can put this left to right in your in your normal calculator. Um, now make sure too that you look at your answer. Remembering I said that approximately 30 percent of your money should be your tax. So if you get an amount, let's say for example, that is more than your income, you should know you made a mistake because how can you pay more than what you earn? It doesn't work, so it probably means you put a plus or a times in the wrong position, like I mentioned earlier on. So I've worked this out to be $13,932 and two decimal places always, 89 cents. Hopefully that's correct. So that's how much tax I need to be paying the government. Now, what the next stage might be, and you'll see in the next question, is that if you are told that you actually throughout the year paid some tax, we call it pay as you go or pay as you earn, P-A-Y-G, P-A-Y-E. Um, what would happen is that you would then work out, have I paid enough money there or have I not paid enough? So often we hope that we've actually paid too much money to the government throughout the year and then I get a tax refund. Sometimes though we work out that we haven't actually paid enough and we've got owed them some money, we call that a tax liability or a tax debt. Okay, if you want to have a crack at the next question, um, certainly have a go at it um, and then pause it and then play it and see how you get on. This one's a bit extended. I've got C and D down there as well, so feel free to go back and just pause it. Okay, so during the 2017-18 financial year, Jared earns $87,700 from his employer and eleven twenty dollars in bank interest. Okay, so what does bank interest mean? Well, that means that we're getting money from the bank that is more income. So when I'm trying to work out his taxable income, I need to figure out what my gross is. Well, my gross is the $87,700 in addition to the extra $1,120 that I earned from my interest from the bank. So we're going to add that together and make it $88,820. So that's how much money is my gross income. I'm just going to put gross there. 
Okay, that's how much money I earn throughout the year. Um, but it does say that his allowable deductions consisting of work-related expenses and donations, believe it or not, donations, you make a donation that is taxable, deductible as well, um, of twenty-one fifty. So they're my donations and my um, deductions. I'm going to take the twenty-one fifty away. Okay, I'm going to go old school here. Okay, I'm going to borrow at zero, at seven, that six, that six, and that's eight. Okay, so we've now worked out that the amount of money that I should be taxed upon, so that's my taxable income, is eighty-six thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Okay, uh, that has taken into consideration both incomes that I've got without the deductions included. Okay, so the next part, of course, is now taking that amount into the tax table. Now, you do get follow through for these questions, so if you get that part wrong, um, you should still be able to get the next part right. Okay, next part, 86,000, so I'm going to go into my brackets. Look at that. It's going to be sitting nicely in that third bracket again. Now, notice, if I didn't take into consideration those deductions, we'd actually be in that fourth bracket, which would be at a higher rate. So you can see why deductions can be quite nice because we get pay, paying less tax. So I'm going to just cross that out because I've figured out that I'm in that third bracket. I'm going to look at the part that's important to me, and this is that amount there. So I'm being charged that 3572 plus the 0 0.325 for each dollar over 37,000. So 86670 minus the 37,000. Hopefully you can calculate that faster than I can. Okay, so again, it's important to ensure when you get your answer that you have a look at it and make a little bit of sense of it and just make sure that it looks right. You might have forgotten a decimal point somewhere. Um, you know, there are things, little things there that you want to make sure that you kind of catch. And you can generally do that by looking at the number and saying, does it look about 20 to 30% of my income or thereabouts? Remembering, of course, if you are in the top tax bracket, you're more likely to start getting amounts to nearly 50% or half of your pay. Okay, so I've calculated, and hopefully this is correct, 19714.75. So that's how much tax that I am told that I have to pay across the year. Now, I haven't paid in tax yet uh, this amount. That's just how much I have to pay. So then I'm going to come and have a look at the next question. Now, the next question is still tax, believe it or not. It says, Jared must also pay the Medicare levy of 2% of his taxable income. Now, what's Medicare levy? In Australia, you know that Medicare is our technically free medical system. It's not really free because we pay for it in our tax. Um, basically, we work out what our taxable income is and we have to pay 2% of that and that contributes towards the free medical system. Of course, if you're earning a lot of money, then 2% of that is more than somebody who's not earning a whole lot. So try and say it's a little bit fair. If you're at the lowest earning level, you shouldn't be paying huge amounts or contributions towards our medical system um, as opposed to if you can afford it. Basically, so it's not really a free system. We still pay for it, um, but we pay for it in hidden costs. So the most important part for this is just read the question. It says two percent of the taxable income. So I go back to part A because that's my taxable income. That's the eighty six six seven zero. So eight six six seven zero, and I'm simply timesing it by two percent or zero point zero two or two over a hundred. Whichever way you want to do it, I'm going to type that in my calculator now. You can probably do it faster than me, hopefully. Okay, and so I get $1,733.40. Now, technically speaking, if you're asked how much tax in total do I owe, you really should be adding those two things together later on. Okay, so we've got our income tax, we've got our Medicare levy. Now, Part D is worth three marks. It says, during the financial year, Jared's employer sent a total of 21626.80 of tax to the Australian ATO. That's how much he, he spent throughout the year or he, he contributed towards his tax. Calculate his refund or liability and make sure to write down whether it is a refund or liability. Now, first of all, I need to ensure, because they've included the Medicare levy in this question, that I need to add the Medicare levy to my income tax. That's really important because if they don't give you the Medicare levy, then you don't obviously don't have to include it. But in this instance, because they have given it to us, we have to consider that as part of our tax. 
No, I just made a mistake there. So let's see if I can get back out. I can. Um, okay, 0.75. So I calculate, again, hopefully it's correct. I'm using my calculator on the computer today. It's not very good. That's how much money that I get, well, I have to pay. Okay, that's how much I have to pay. So what we're looking at, first of all, is one mark for that amount. The second mark comes from saying, all right, well, that's how much I have to pay, but I have paid that 216 to 6.80. That's how much I have paid. So if we look at that, have I paid enough? Well, you can see if I've paid that amount, I've actually paid more than what I had to pay, right? So what I'm going to say, because I've paid more, I'm going to get that money as a refund. So I'm going to subtract those two amounts. And whatever that answer is going to be, let me do that now. Whatever that amount is, I know that's how much I've overpaid. So I've overpaid, not a whole lot this year, $178.65. And that means that I'm going to get a refund of that amount because, again, I had to pay that 21448, but I did pay the 21626, so I paid too much. I get that money back as a, as a tax refund. Of course, if I figured out that I hadn't paid enough, then I have to pay that back, and that's called a tax debt or a tax liability. So again, just to uh, sort of go back over, gross income is what we are paid by our employer. Net income is our pay that goes into our account. That means a tax has been removed or other deductions have been removed from that. Your taxable income is the amount of money that you believe you should be taxed upon and they use that in the tax table to work out your income tax. Medicare levy is usually two and a half, so 2% at the moment. It used to be one and a half percent, so you still might see that amount coming about, but it's of your taxable income. And then you use all that, all that amount with your PAYE or PAYG tax. That's how much you have paid throughout the year to figure out what you're owed. All a bit confusing. I understand that. But in year 9, you'll do this in year 10. And you'll do it in year 11. And hopefully by the time you get to year 12, it'll be second nature. Okay? Because this is important when you leave school as well. Hope that made sense, guys. Please have a crack at the questions. Uh, drop me a, a message on Canvas if you need to. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.